Hello and welcome to this introductory lecture which aims to explain some of the physical concepts that you need to be familiar with in order to achieve an appropriate understanding of electrical circuits. The first couple of concepts that we will be looking at are forces and fills. We will start with a force which you are hopefully familiar with, gravity. If we pick up an apple and hold it above the surface of the earth at a certain height, we notice that we have to make some effort to prevent it from falling to the ground. In technical terms, there is a force acting on the apple, which is trying to bring it down towards the surface of the planet, that is gravity, and we are applying an equal and opposite force with our hand to prevent this from happening. We can use a simple formula to work out how strong the gravitational force that acts on our apple is. This is a function of the mass of the apple, m2, the mass of our planet, m1, the distance between the two objects, d, and the gravitational constant, g. However, instead of using this formula, we could create a map around the Earth which tells us what force will act on our apple at various points in space. We can use a vector to represent the force, since this entity has both a magnitude, which tells us how strong the force will be, and a direction, which will tell us in which direction the apple will move. So we place the apple at different points, we measure the force that acts upon it, and we represent each force vector as an arrow. The thicker the arrow, the stronger the force. The direction of the force is, of course, that of the arrow. But there is a downside to this approach, and that is the fact that this force is related to a specific mass, m2, the mass of our apple. It would be more useful to have a map which allows us to work out the force that acts on any mass. In order to do this, we may define a new vector, ge, whose magnitude is that of the force acting on the apple divided by the mass of the apple itself. So instead of using the force map, we will use this new entity, GE, which we call the gravitational field, and which maps the space around the Earth just as effectively. To work out the magnitude of the force acting on any mass, MX, we simply multiply this mass by the magnitude of the field, GE. Also, the direction of the force is the same as that of the field. Note that here we're using a specific notation to distinguish vectors and scalar quantities. We use bold characters for vectors and standard ones for scalar quantities. A pictorial representation of the gravitational field would of course look very similar to that of the force map. Now that we've introduced forces and fields, we need to talk about work and energy, and in particular potential energy. If we want to take a mass from the surface of the Earth up to a specific height, we have to apply a force which is opposite in direction to the gravitational force. We will also have to continue to apply this force as we move the apple all the way up to the desired height. We can say that we are actively working against gravity or, more appropriately, that we are doing work against the gravitational field. Since we are losing some of our energy to do this work, we define this work as negative. However, energy is not created nor destroyed. So where did this energy go that we expended through doing negative work? We have now given the apple the potential to do something. If we release it, it will fall back down to the surface of the Earth. This potential to do something that the apple now has is termed potential energy. So to summarize, we can use a field to represent the effects of natural forces like gravity on various objects. When we act against the field, i.e. against the natural forces that an object would normally experience, we lose energy, but in losing this energy, in doing this negative work, we give the object some potential energy. Under the right conditions, this potential energy will allow our object to do something. For example, in the case of the apple, potential energy gives it the ability to fall back down to Earth. By the time it reaches the surface of the Earth, all its potential energy will have been transformed into kinetic energy, which is the energy required for a mass to be accelerated from rest to a specific velocity. Let's look at one common application of these physical principles. We can pump the water up from a big pond into a reservoir placed above the highest terrain in a town. To do this, we would of course need to expend some energy using a pump, and we are doing negative work because this work is against the gravitational field. This, however, will give the water in the reservoir some potential energy. Now we can let the water flow back down to the earth by piping it through a different route down to people's houses. Next, we will be looking at charges and electric fields.